In this lecture, we're gonna talk about negative keywords, negative match type. From here on out, we're gonna to refer to negative match as just negative keywords to avoid confusion because negative match type doesn't actually trigger ads. Negative match types are purely a preventative measure. For example, if you had a ad group that just had a few negative keywords, you would never get a single impression, right? Negative keywords just mod moderate and they put additional limitations on your positive keywords. So you have your positive keywords that have your broad match, broad match modified phrase and exact. Negative keywords put additional limitations, put additional restrictions. And negative keywords allows broad match and broad match modified and phrase match to be so good when you use them in conjunction with negative keywords. So negative keywords uses that negative minus symbol to prevent words and phrases found in search terms from triggering your ads. Negative match Negative keywords can be broad phrase or exact match, and that gets a little complicated because that makes negative keywords its own st strategic concept unto itself. So let's take a look at a few different uh, negative keyword examples based on different match types and see how they would affect search terms from triggering our ads. So first, we'll take a look at a broad match example. And of course, broad match is just the negative and the keyword. And in the same way that broad match positive keywords include the most amount of potential search terms, negative broad excludes the most amount of potential search terms. So for example, when I do negative faux leather, I'm telling Google that any time faux leather shows up in a search term, doesn't matter what else, if it's there, don't trigger my ad. So ads will not show for faux leather chairs, leather faux chairs because Full leather are in both of those search terms. Ads can show for leather office chair, faux leather desk accessories. But you have to be careful because just as broad match negative excludes the most potential amount of queries, if I have two words, which I do here, faux and leather, I'm telling Google that only when those two words are in the search term do I forbid you, let's say, from showing an ad. So as we know, ads will not show for faux leather chair and leather faux chair because faux and leather are in both of those potential search terms. But ads can show for leather office chair and faux desk accessories. Even though leather shows up here and faux shows up there, in that, in that search term, my, ne my negative keyword is faux leather. So if I wanted to not show up for faux or for leather, what would I need to do? I would need to have negative faux, and I would also have to have a separate negative keyword, negative leather. And if I had those two separate keywords, then I wouldn't show up for either leather office chair or faux desk accessories. Now let's take a look at negative phrase match. And again, it works the same way. I'm telling Google with a negative phrase match, it's again, it's, it's enclosed in quotation marks, and negative phrase match says when the words this specific phrase in this specific order show up in any search term, I do not want my ad to show. So over here I have negative brushed metal and this is how you would add that into your account with a negative sign and then the keyword in quotation marks. So your ads will not show up for buy brushed metal cabinets and brush or brushed metal office chairs because brushed metal shows up in that order of my negative keyword in both of those search terms. But however, your ads can show for metal file cabinets, metal brushed effect desktops, even though metal and brushed both show up in the search term, they're in the different order. And remember, we're going by phrase match and, and the defining characteristic of phrase match is the words enclosed in the, in the quotation marks have to be in that order. Metal office chairs, because metal is not its own negative keyword, it's brushed metal together in phrase match, that's a negative keyword. So that's how negative phrase match works. And there are different situations. You have to take a look at the search terms that are triggering your ads and figure out should a keyword be added as a negative phrase match, a negative exact match, a negative broad match. And I'm going to walk you through a live account to show you how I would strategically add negative keywords with which match type. Now let's finally take a look at exact match. So exact match again uses the brackets. So negative exact match, I have negative office chairs in brackets. And it's the same thing conceptually as exact match positive. So my exact match positive keyword is giving me the most control over which search terms um, show up and I'll, and I'll 
get the fewest search terms, let's say, or the, or the least variability in search terms that would trigger an ad. Same thing as the negative. A negative exact match knocks out the fewest amount of search terms. It's the least constrictive of the match types. Positive match type is the most restrictive form of match types. And negative match types is the least restrictive form of match type. So I guess in that way, it's, it's sort of an opposite. So if my negative exact match keyword is negative brackets office chairs, negative office chairs, my ads will not show up for the search office chairs. But my ads could show up for leather office chairs, office chairs for sale, chairs for an office. It doesn't matter. The only time I don't want my ads to show is for office chairs. So for example, if I'm popping, how would I treat the word free? If, if I'm seeing free showing up, right? I sell office chairs. I don't want to cater. I don't want to be in front of people potentially getting charged for a click if somebody's looking for free office chairs, right? How would I treat free? What type of negative match type would that be? What do you think? If you answered broad, you'd be cor correct. So for popping, I would want to have negative free as my match type, which basically tells Google whenever free shows up in any search query, don't trigger any of these keywords, right? That's just not a search term. If free is showing up anywhere, I don't want that to, to trigger my ads. Now, say I'm running an ad group for wheeled office chairs or office chairs on wheels or my that section that has wheels. And I want, I only want to show ads to people who are searching for chairs that have wheels. And I have some broad match keywords in the, in the ad group. And I look at the search term report and I see that I'm getting a lot of searches for just office chairs. Now, office chairs is a search term that I want to show for, right? Office chairs is still a search term that I want to pay for. I just don't want it being sent to that page. And uh, maybe I don't want to pay as much as I'm willing to pay for click for my wheelchairs, right? So this is where traffic sculpting comes in. Think of negative keywords as not only filters, but as sculptors as well. I'm going to talk to you in more depth about traffic sculpting shortly, but this would be one idea of traffic sculpting. I can add that negative keyword exact match office chairs at the ad group level on my wheeled campaign, which would tell Google that when anybody searches for office chairs, you're not allowed to trigger an ad from this ad group. It must go to a different ad group that might have an eligible keyword and hopefully that would be sculpted. So I'd be sculpting that search term to the proper ad. I'm going to show you some other potential use cases for traffic sculpting. I'm going to show you how to set that up in Google ads. I'm also going to show you how to use the traffic sculpting feature in Optimizer, which is super, super cool. So negative keywords, exact match have certainly have a place. And there are plenty of times that you would want to use exact match negative for an account irrelevant keyword list or at the campaign level, of course, as well. So that's how to start thinking about negative keywords and some of their specific characteristics. And of course, using all the different match types and understanding how the match types interplay with negative match type with negative keywords. Again, we've mentioned this negative keywords could be added at the ad group level the campaign level, which means if you add an ad group, if you add a negative keyword at the ad group level, you're telling Google that look at these negative keywords when you're assessing which search terms to trigger keywords in this ad group. You could add negative keywords at the campaign level and then Google applies those negative keywords to all the ad groups in that campaign. You could also add negative keyword lists and apply those lists to multiple campaigns, which is a really, really powerful feature. And I'm going to show you how to use those uh, to your advantage. All three of those things are really important. Negative keywords at the ad group level are typically done for sculpting purposes. When you want to have, when you want to make sure that the ads are being shown to the right user for the right search terms, so you sculpt traffic to different ad groups, you add them at the campaign level and you add negative keyword lists to stay organized. I'm going to show you all those things as well. You also need to understand research tools for negative keywords. And we're going to talk about research tool for negative keywords as well. So you're going to take a look at the search terms report, which is free. Google autocomplete suggestions, free. Google related searches, free. Suvel.com, which is a really, really cool website. It gives you some great positive and negative keyword suggestions. It's free. Ubersuggest.org. We've mentioned that in the keyword research and keyword planning sections, uh, free. And then some paid versions, Optimizer, SpyFu, SEMrush, Wordstream also has a more, um, more expensive, but more sort of like agency management software that also makes finding negative keywords and adding negative keywords a breeze. But you could get very, very far and run highly professional campaigns, as I have for a long time, with the free research tools available to you. As long as you spend the appropriate amount of time using those keyword research tools and finding good negative keyword ideas and making sure you're adding them to the right place and you're using the right match type 
for your negative keywords. Just to reiterate, negative keywords are extremely important. I have never in my life seen a Google ad account that was really well put together, that was highly profitable, that did not have a serious negative keyword strategy. In fact, many of the accounts that I manage and that our company manages have more, way more negative keywords than they do positive keywords. And in fact, I would aim as a rule of thumb to a one-to-one -one match. If you have 100 positive keywords in your account, you should have at least 100 negative keywords. If you have 500 keywords in your account, you should have at least 500 negative keywords and usually a two-to-one. So for every one or one to two, for every one positive keyword, you should have two negative keywords. That will show that you're actually spending time in your search terms report researching negative keywords, but it'll also show that your account is not chock filled with phrase and exact match keywords. You're experimenting, you're getting aggressive, you're looking for new ideas, but you're also adding lots of negative keywords as you go along to make sure that over time you could retain the benefits of broad match and broad match modified, but you're not wasting money on irrelevant clicks and on irrelevant traffic through negative keywords. So as a quick exercise, I would recommend sitting down, take a pen and paper, take a notepad and come up with 15, 20, right off the bat, negative keyword ideas. Think about how people would search for your product. Think about maybe eBooks is a negative keyword idea, Amazon, uh, Craigslist, cheap, free, pictures, recipes, directions, any of these search terms that might be part of a keyword or a way, of somebody, a way somebody's searching for your products or services, start thinking about what negative keywords you would want as an overall negative keyword in your account that you wouldn't want any search terms showing up for, which would again be what match type? Broad match. And then start thinking about how you might use negative keywords for sculpting. In the very next lecture, we're gonna continue on talking about negative keywords, different ideas for, for negative keyword lists, and we're gonna finally go back into the Google Ads dashboard into some live accounts and show you how to structure negative keyword lists at the account level, campaign, and ad group level as well. And I look forward to seeing you guys very soon in a couple seconds. Cheers for now.